<laughs> well, a local health tech startup is one step closer to creating a game changer when it comes to the fight against lung cancer. Oxford Cancer Analytics, or Oxcan, has been developing blood tests and AI that could potentially detect cancer earlier. So joining us live this morning for a look at this research is Daniel Schultz, the company's chief product officer. Uh, Daniel, this is fascinating technology. And really, you know, we talk so much about AI these days. This sounds like AI, artificial intelligence, for the good. Explain a little bit about what you're doing and what your goals are here. Thanks so much, Nick. Yeah, so at Oxford Cancer Analytics, Oxcan, we're enabling curative cancer treatments through early detection with an initial focus on lung cancer as it's the highest cancer mortality worldwide and in Canada. Mm -hmm. So more people die from lung cancer than any other cancer. And the reason is majority of these lung cancers are detected late when they're terminal. All we can provide is palliative and supportive care. But if we can detect lung cancer earlier, we can have a drastic improve, improvement in survivorship. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we set out to do at Oxford Cancer Analytics. Can we develop a simple blood test that can be routinely done to provide clinicians with accurate and timely information so that they can intervene earlier and provide the right treatment at the right time so that we can not only just support these patients, mm -hmm. but actually find them a cure. So how is AI helping move this along and make this more effective and even possible? Very good question. So, in the body when we have cancer, this cancer is leaching materials earlier than we typically detect it. Mm -hmm. But there's thousands of materials that are being leached into the blood and into the body. How do we know which of these different materials are related to that cancer or something else in the body? So what we've done is we're looking at all these materials and we take AI to understand all the relationships between those different materials. Are there different pathways that one material is associated with another? So then we can take thousands and we can filter it down to a small panel of less than 10 to 20 so that we can then produce a low cost and affordable blood test. Mm -hmm. It sounds to me like AI is kind of speeding up the research, right? Because you can sort of put all of this information in and then get, if you query it properly, get the answers you want on the, on the, on the other side. Exactly. As we were chatting, chatting earlier about ChatGPT, when you put a book in and try to get a summary from it, mm -hmm. that's exactly what we're doing, but for the body. Yeah. We're taking all this biological information, and can we actually produce something tangible and functional from it so that we can actually do good for patients? So what's the response, Daniel, from the medical community, from doctors, especially you know, oncologists, et cetera, when, when you say, hey, I've got this model that can detect cancer even earlier than you can right now? They must be saying, come on, bring it on. Let's get this. That's exactly it. We first started the company during COVID, actually. Mm. And within just a couple of years, we were able to expand and launch clinical studies internationally across Canada, UK, India, US, mm -hmm. because doctors want to be a part of this next generation development. They see the value of detecting cancer earlier mm -hmm. and doing it through something that's low cost and scalable and can be routinely done. Because at the end of the day, early stage cancer is asymptomatic. So we don't have any perceptible signals to detect that typically. There's no reason why a patient would go into the office or right. into the clinic. Yeah. And so for us to then provide a tool, we need to be able to screen millions of patients. And this needs to be very easy to do mm -hmm. so that we can detect this needle in a haystack. And of course, in order to be able to do this, you need some money. I understand Oxcan has just sort of come into, you know, been able to raise some money, some, some funding. That should really help you grow this even more, I suppose. Yes, thank you so much. We are honored by and a heartfelt thank to all of our investors and supporters. So we've just closed our first round of our Series A. Uh, we've raised 11 million USD with this round, and right. that, totally, that total comes to about 17 million for our mission. And this will be a huge uh, op opportunity for us to now take what we've developed, continue validating our product, and make this available to patients. And I'm going to assume, Daniel, that you're going to move from lung cancer to other kinds of cancers and detection of that going forward. Is that kind of the next few steps? That's exactly the goal. While we've initially focused on lung cancer, there's many other cancers that have similar issues where they're detected too late, such mm -hmm. as pancreatic cancer. Yeah. And so we've developed a platform that allows us to understand all these different molecular signatures in the body. And while we've done it for lung cancers, we're already starting to work on these other high mortality cancers as well. Okay. Daniel Schultz, this is fascinating. Good luck with this. You're helping save lives. We really appreciate this. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much, Nick. Good to meet you this morning.